Hey, hi. In this video, I will show you how to create, configure, and use SFTP based file transfer to AWS S3 bucket with using AWS Transfer Family Service. As you see in this picture, I have taken this uh, block diagram from the AWS document. It tells about you know how does this AWS Transfer Family Service works. Alright, so here in uh, here as you see the configure right. So the first block which tells about our you know our laptop, our local system, where we will be invoking the clients like uh, WinSCP, um, uh, FileZilla, yeah. With using those clients, you know we will be uh, making a connection to with the AWS Transfer Family Server, where uh, in that server we will be either using SFTP, FTP, or or, or FTP. Any any of these combination uh, protocol will be used. With using any of this uh, protocol, you know, we will also be performing uh, a file processing workflows on that file which you are transforming uh, actually. And once the some uh, file processing workflow, you know, runs on that file, finally that file gets stored in a Amazon S3 bucket or AWS S3 bucket. Yeah. So that is the workflow that I'm going to show you in this demo. But apart from this, you know, you also can store the uh, this file in a Amazon EFS service that is elastic file uh, file system yeah all right so that was my main motive of this demo okay so with that note so I will just directly take you to the uh, uh, my AWS console so this is my AWS console so here you know I will show you this complete setup from the scratch okay that is what I just wanted to tell you I don't have anything being configured right now so what I do is for this case I need to have a destination you know bucket so for this case okay so what I do is what I'm doing is now let me create an example uh, uh, bucket in uh, US East region. So for, for that case, let me give my bucket name something like this, SFTP uh, bucket demo. Then let me use the you know uh, um, US East region. So here I will choose my um, US East region. So where is my US East region? So here is the US East one region. And that's all, okay. What I do is I just go ahead and create this bucket. Alright, so it is asking that the, the bucket cannot contain this invalid character, so let me use this hyphen characters. So that is how, okay, so we need to follow it. Even also tells you, the you know, bucket is also exist, so let me tell you. Something like, you know, I will add it as a, you know, um, CQ, okay. Um, um, so CQLS, that is my, you know, um, uh, that is my uh, uh, YouTube channel, that is there. Cloud Quick Labs, yeah. All right, so let me tell this. So let's give this bucket name. I will just copy this bucket name, and eventually this bucket name has to be copied in this um, in this policy. I will explain. Anyways, I will explain this policy later as well. So just uh, for the uh, remembrance purpose, I'm just copying that name here as well. Finally, this name is been available, and I henceforth I'm just going ahead and creating this bucket. Yeah. Okay. So once this bucket is been created. We go to the next stage, okay? So here the prerequisite is, you know, uh, is you know, we should have one destination bucket on which you know you can do a file transfer with using AWS Transfer File Family uh, Transfer Family Services, okay? So you see AWS Transfer Family Services, which is a why it is called a transfer family in the sense we are using there, you know, it, it provides multiple you know protocols, okay, through which you can transfer the files. So that's the reason it called as a AWS Transfer Family you know uh, service. All right, so with that note, what I do is I will go to the next label. The next task which I need to do is I have to create an IAM policy. Uh, so what I do is I go to the IAM for that case and I will create an IAM policy for that. So to create the IAM policy, this is the reason, you know, this is the JSON file, you know, I have depicted for, you know, certain, uh, for that case. So I have kept the, you know, IAM policy that, you know, uh, in, the, in this format of JSON. So here it contains a statement block. Uh, this policy contains a statement block. So in that one, you know, we have two statements. One is, you know, we are allowing certain actions on all the S3 resources, all right? And finally, uh, targeting to my resource, in the sense targeting to the resource which I have created, that is the S3 bucket which I have created now. We are just allowing, uh, you know, all action, all actions on the, uh, all S3 actions on this particular targeting to the bucket, yeah? Particular targeted bucket, okay? So this is the simple, uh, you know, um, uh, policy I'm going to create now. We will be using this policy, you know, while uh, while I show you the rest part of the demo. Yeah. So I go to the policy. I create a policy. Okay. And while I creating the policy, I use a JSON option and we created this policy. Yeah. All right. So I go to the JSON option. I just uh, remove that and I just copy paste it. Yeah. You can follow the same step. Okay. When you try from your side. 
All right, so uh, next, I don't want you to tag, so I will just call it as a SFTP policy. So I'm just giving a very generic name and uh, that is what, okay? Finally, um, I don't want to give you any descriptions, I just create uh, this SFTP policy. Now, what I do is I will also create a rule uh, with using this policy, yeah? That is what my next uh, you know, step is. We need a rule and uh, and a role with this kind of policy that's the reason no i just created a policy and now i will create a role and we will attach that policy to that yeah so why do we why do we need a role here so we need a role because this role will be used by a sftp or, or a aws transfer service user so the user in the sense the person who is invoking the win scp client is called a user of the aws transfer family service yeah so uh, to allow the user, in the sense to enable the user, we have to assign a role. That is something I am going to show you, like you know how this role can be consumed in the down the line. But this becomes a, you know, this becomes a prerequisite. Okay, that's the reason I am just creating a role now, where uh, you know uh, we are, you know, we are trusting. So we are creating a role with the trust belongs to only transfer services of AWS. Yeah. All right. So let me call it as a um, SFTP SFTP underscore role. All right, so this is our role and let me, um, this service, okay, you see it has been trusted by transfer transfer service, okay. All right, so the role has been created. Now I attach a, a policy which I created here, okay. So I will go to the SFTP role, SFTP role, and I go and attach the policy which I have created again, okay. So now becomes complete, okay. In the sense now this I am task becomes complete here, okay. I go to the attach policy and we, we search for SFTP, um, sorry, SFTP underscore policy, and we attach this policy. So this is the IM, uh, uh, IM page side a task that you need to do. Okay, so now we did two tasks. One is we created a bucket. We also went come, came here and used the. Uh, okay, we we also uh, you know created a role uh, with the you know permissions with the uh, permissions targeting to our S3 bucket. Yeah. All right. So now we done with the two first prerequisite jobs. Now let's go to the our original service that is AWS transfer. AWS transfer family service page and we create we create an instance of AWS transfer family where we will be choosing only SFTP protocol okay so for your for your information I'm not telling about the other protocols because other protocols are a bit complex but to help you to get started with the AWS transfer family so this is the best method that you can get started anyways you know at maximum enterprise level you know generally people are using SFTP based modes of you know transforming the files but FTP and FTP, FTPS and FTP are also being used heavily, but you know, at certain secure cases. All right, so we go for the maximum uh, usage case, that is SFTP case, okay? All right, so let me let me minimize this. So this is this page is becoming a bit lengthier. All right, so here, you know, when I'm creating an instance of AWS transfer family, we are creating a server instance, okay? So here in this page, okay, I'm choosing SFTP option only for your information, okay? I'm not choosing the other options probably I will create a dedicated video for the other two options okay if I tell you in the mixture probably it becomes a mixture and probably you may not get it that's the reason I'm just dedicating this one and after that you know what I do is we create an identity provider okay so here big challenge of you know using this SFTP uh, services you know SFTP services are you know tightly you know integrated are tightly coupled with the you know providers you know in the sense identity provider these services are you know uh, uh, tightly, you know, coupled with the service, uh, you know, identity providers, okay? Because without identity provider, these services are, you know, uh, cannot work as expected, okay? That's the reason here, you know, AWS also, you know, asking you to choose which of the, you know, identity provider option you want to use for this particular instance of the service. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just using, so let me make bigger. So I'm using the service manager in the sense I'm telling, uh, see boss, you use, uh, um, you know, please give me uh, from your side only, you know, service, you know, identity provider capability from your side itself. That is what service managed, you know, identity provider in the sense, native capability. Yeah, we go to the next one. All right, so here, you know, endpoint configuration in the sense, from which place you want this, you know, SFTP servers to be, you know, communicated. So in that case, you know, we use public accessibility. Or VPC. VPC is nothing but you know again kind of a very secure and you will be accessible in the sense this service will be accessible within a VPC that is called as a VPC hosted on. So that is a separate uh, that's that's why I said you know that is a very um, uh, very secured way of you know using the service but 
yes but eventually the steps which you will follow is is almost looks like the same yeah so here in this case i will be choosing the publicly accessible then custom host name i don't want any custom host name i just use whatever the host name being given by the aws itself okay that's the reason i just leave it as it is and pffs i don't need to use it i just go to the next options here you know, as i said you know choose the domain so here uh, you know when when i was you know explaining this pipeline flow uh, i was you know i told you, you know it also supports efs that is amazon elastic file system as well but you know majorly you know we will consume aws s3 bucket okay which is a very uh, lightweight uh, highly scalable and less cost okay very low cost one so that's the reason people will go for the amazon s3 bucket yeah all right so we go we choose this amazon s3 bucket now we go to the next steps so here you know cloudwatch logging so for cloudwatch logging uh, what i tell is i tell my service to create boss was create your uh, create the role which is needed for you know, logging of the services on your own that is where you choose like you know create new new role all right so we go to the next option so in the next option so the security policy uh, please choose it as it is and uh, rest uh, server host key you can keep it keep it uh, you know uh, 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 by default false okay all right so here is the you know very uh, peculiar thing okay so let me tell you where it comes so this is the block you see right file processing workflows okay so when you are pushing a file from some of the source with using this aws transfer family so during this uh, time from the source to destination during in between these uh, time in between this flow you can perform some operations before it it, it comes and rest on a amazon s3 bucket okay that is what you know file processing workflow tells about so here what i do is i i go ahead and, and create a managed workflow for this uh, case so here i know i i do nothing so okay what i do is i create one example workflow uh, which will eventually tag the or files files okay files which i'm going through uh, which i'm going to uh, put it here okay all right so let me call it as a test workflow let me call it as a wf workflow so as i say workflow is nothing but you know you are you are mentioning some workflow you are mentioning some automation which will do certain task on the file which you are transforming to aws s3 bucket with using you know uh, aws transfer family service all right so uh, i just uh, keep the steps okay so here let me add one steps so this is my description and i will add the steps so here there are multiple you know multiple options but you know i choose you see the choose type of the you know type of the workflow that you want copy the file tag the file delete the file so something like this so generally i choose tag for for just you know, for the demo purpose i just choose the tag file but probably you know some certain cases you might need to copy you might need to delete you might need to custom steps yeah so this is how in the sense that's what i mean in the sense to do some certain operations the workflow helps us okay so i will call this a tag files let me call this workflow as a tag file so what is the tag that you want to put in i will call it as a sftp based in the sense this is this file is transformed sftp based yes yeah probably these you know if you are tagging your objects present in our aws s3 bucket with using these tags it will definitely help you in, in automations or in kind of any kind of you know uh, uh, reporting purpose so let me create this workflow okay all right so um that's all just click on the you know rest all rest all steps are you know very um, optional i just click it uh, clicked on the you uh, know uh, on the uh, on the create workflow and eventually yes okay that has been done now if i go ahead and refresh it we should see that you know test workflow right so that workflow is now listed and here um what do i do so here you know what i do is so to perform that operation in the sense to perform this operation um uh, we should have okay so to perform this uh, workflow operation this is to tag uh, s3 bucket so we should have certain role as well so for that case what i do is i choose one one default role but in your case you know you can choose uh, you know any other role that you have dedicatedly created in the sense create a role with the permissions uh, having permissions to tag the s3 bucket okay or our s3 bucket or our s3 objects yeah so here let me um, use something like you know uh, something etl yeah so etl lambda access this is the uh, this is something like a role which i used for you know previous demo but this role is a admin permission role so that's the reason i'm choosing which is sufficient to do this workflow all right so i will go to the next and create the service yeah and that's all okay so it will take certain you know certain minutes or few minutes okay you see currently the status of this particular you know um, uh, the status of this particular uh, um, workflow um, or particular this uh, server is currently starting and you see there are no users 
and the end point is public and the uh, domain is Amazon S3 bucket, okay? All right, so it will take few minutes. Before, when it takes it few minutes, I will just, you know, explain the uh, the other other few very important informations. So as, as I showed you earlier, you know, we created one workflow, right? So this is the workflow and, uh, you know, you can see what, what does actually this workflow does. Okay, so you see, you know, here, you know, what we are doing is we are tagging a file uh, with the certain details. Okay, if I go to the details, we should see something like SFTP based uh, and value equal to yes. In the sense, this workflow will tag our, you know, objects which we are going to store in a bucket. Yeah. All right. So while it takes, it takes few minutes, uh, close to three, four minutes. We'll wait till uh, till that time. And meantime, let me explain the other other jobs. Okay. So uh, let's step back, step one step back. So here, let me come back to this poster or uh, this particular picture. Yeah. So here. I know you need to set up your system with the WinSAP. Okay, so in this demo, I'm using WinSAP. Probably you can use FileZilla or any other, you know, any other Windows, you know, any other file transfer from clients. Okay, according to your OS system. Okay, I have Windows. That's the reason I use WinSAP. Yeah. So to to set up a WinSAP uh, 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 application in your system, what you have to do is you have to go to this site called you know WinSAP.net. Okay, uh, download WinSAP something like this. Okay and go here and choose download okay which will eventually you know help you to if i go back so probably um, here it is so this is the right page okay i was in the wrong page so here you have to go to the winsap.net forward slash english and download that php file okay so this is the file you know you have to go in and click on the download okay so once you click on the download it will ask you for a you know, location where this download file has to be set in so i chosen here you see i choose uh, this particular folder structure and you know this is how uh, this .exe file looks in after the download. What you do is you double click on this file, okay, something like this, which will eventually, you know, ask you for whether you want to install it or not. Okay, this is how, you know, you can follow the installation steps, which will eventually install WinSAP client in your system. Yeah. So once you double click on this one, uh, it will open GUI something like this. All right. So from the GUI, you know, what you do is, so let me open this one. So from the GUI, it will ask you, uh, uh, like, you know, do you want to, you know, uh, install it and, and rest all, you know, the rest all just follow the whatever the UI, you know, dialogues comes in picture. Okay, so here, let me accept it. Uh, file upgrade, in the sense, I'm just upgrading because my mine is already installed. Okay, something like this, you know, you need to follow and at the end, you know, you will be uh, able to install the WinSAP in your system. Yeah. So this, because why we are using this in the sense, we leverage this WinSAP client and we try to you know, push some files in the AWS S3 bucket with using AWS transfer family. Okay, that is the, you know, that is the main motive of this demo. And henceforth, you know, we are just, you know, we are just, I'm just showing like, you know, how you can uh, configure WinSAP in your system. All right. Okay. So we go back and see the status of our, you know, our transfer service. Eventually it will take some time, as I said, you know. So after successful installation, this, way, this is something like, you know, redirection happens. Uh, probably you can ignore that. And this is also I showed you, and I will also close the other options. And here you go. It has came on in a sense, it has taken less than two minutes, and it was eventually it is successful now. And after the successful installation, you know, this is how the WinSAP clients looks in. I will also show you later as well. So far now we are good, and our WinSAP, you know, uh, uh, our AWS transfer family server is up and running fine. Once the status is online, so now we go ahead and do the next operations. Okay. So when you open, when you click on this server that you have chosen. It automatically it, it tells a dialogue. So there is a dialogue saying like, you know, no user been added in the sense nobody is using this service. To make this being used by some users, you know, we have to add it manually. And that is where the option has been provided here. If you, if you scroll down, so there is option called, you know, add users, right? So users, so this is the bar, you know, this is the next step that you have to follow after successful creation of, you know, server. That is the AWS transfer family server of protocol SFTP. All right, so I click here on the add user and let me call it as a, um, you know, um, uh, cloud quick. Yeah, so recently I have, you know, changed my uh, channel name to cloud quick labs, you know, to make more sense. Yeah. All right, so this is, let, let, let be my username as a, you know, cloud quick labs. All right. And here, you know, we use the role which we created at the initial step. So the, what was the role name? SFTP role. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is how, you know, you have to choose the roles and let's go to the next options. Next option, you know, in the sense, next option policy, you know, uh, here, uh, as this role has the policy, so I don't use any kind of policy. But, you know, in general, you know, it is recommended to, 
you know, scope down in the sense you scope down this particular task with a certain policies, yeah, uh, with using certain IAM policies or you know auto-generated policies. That also in the sense this SCP, uh, you know, this SFTP server, you know, it also you know allows you to customize the you know usage to a particular user. Okay, and that is where these options comes in picture. So in this case, I don't use none. I I just use none. Whereas the other options can be explored from yourself. In a sense, either if you want to you know, mask the user capability by using the uh, certain SAP policies or IAM policies, or are the auto-generated policies as well, you can leverage. Yeah. So here in this case, you know, I just use none because you know I this role already has the policies. Yeah. Okay. So next one is you know um, home directory. So as you said, in the sense when you are uh, when you are accessing when you are adding a user to SFTP server, probably you know we will also give a source. In the sense on which target you know you are providing that particular user the access right so that is where home directory comes in picture so here home directory is nothing but our you know s3 bucket yeah so our s3 bucket what was the our s3 bucket so we just gave something like this so if i can recollect the file bucket name so this is their bucket name yeah i will just find that bucket name and i will give access to only that bucket yeah all right so this is how it, uh, this is where you know uh, you know we given if i can remove this so why does that come? In the sense, you know, it, it generally tends to, you know, generally tends to uh, create a subfolder. Okay, so let me do it again. Why? Because, you know, uh, if you remember in the good old days, you know, generally, um, um, when when we, you know, when in, in traditional days, when we are used to use the SFTP servers, we used to have a, you know, user-based folders. Okay, that is what, you know, this is doing it. But since I don't have any subfolders underneath this S3 bucket, I don't choose anything. Okay, all right. So with that note, you know, we are in the next step that is a SSH public key. Okay, so here it needs SSH public keys, you know, to add a user. So for that case, you know, you need to have one more requirement. Uh, that is one more prerequisite. That is, you know, you should have a, a, a public key. Okay, you should have a public key generated from your system. So for that case, you know, you can use the putty uh, keygen uh, uh, method. Okay, so let me open the putty keygen because I, if if your system does not has the putty keygen installed. Probably, you know, you can go to the, you know, uh, putty installation in the sense, download the putty from this, uh, from the internet, install the putty in your system automatically, putty keygen will get installed in your system as well. So if I go to the putty keygen, okay, so if I go to the putty gen, so in the sense, this is nothing but putty key generators, okay, that is what putty keygen I said. So this is how, you know, uh, a client looks like in, okay. So here, you know, you can generate a public key, all right. So to generate a public key, what you have to do is you come here and just click on here, okay? And just after clicking on the generate button, just scroll, you know, just uh, just move your uh, uh, cursor in the sense, move your cursor something like this, and it will eventually generate a public key, okay? So this is the public key that you need to leverage, okay? So let me copy this public key very, you know, easily. So you have to select the uh, the all the big string which is being generated when we clicked on the generate button, and just copy as it is and paste it here, okay? So this is a public key of your, you know, of your local system. All right. So now what I do is I we so that is the one step. Okay. All right. So let me complete this step. Okay, all right. So here after adding the SSH public key, you can click on add user. Yeah. Which will eventually add a user uh, to your SFTP server. Okay. If you go back, you see one user is being added now. Now we have to do one more step here. Add the on and put the key generator. Okay. So here. We have to save this particular uh, uh, key in the form of as a private key. Okay, for that case, yes, I don't want. So, so uh, for that case, now I have to save this particular, you know, uh, a private key in my local system so that you know I will be using it in the next step. Yes, I want to save this particular private key without any passwords. That is the recommended way when you are using the WinSAPs. All right, so we go to the next one uh, and we store it in a uh, my uh, file transfer folder, and I will call it as a um, I will call it as a, as a private key. Yeah. So private key. All right. So this is my private key and all right. So we'll save that private key and that's all. Okay. So let me see the private key. So you see, once you save this private key, private key, you should be, you know, saved as a dot ppk file. Yeah. All right. So once once that has been done, now you are ready to use the SFTP server. Yeah, you are ready to use the SFTP server's capability. So for that case, you know, what you have to do is we have to open the WinSAP, which we have installed uh, earlier. Just open that window, the WinSAP client, 
and you know you okay so now automatically it will ask you for you know set a session okay set a new session to set a new session you know you have to choose the you know protocol here we are using the sftp protocol and the host name okay so the host name in the sense um, our host name so if you go to the server so let me go back click on this server id eventually you see one endpoints okay this is nothing but your server name yeah all right so copy that put it in a host name and make sure that your port number is something like this yeah your port number is 22 and the username so username should be the same user which we have added down 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 okay so if i go to the user so the username is something like this okay that is my channel name that is cloud quick labs that is my username and uh, let me put it user all right and password okay here there is no password because you know we are using the you know public key based or uh, public key or private key based okay correct i uh, know in the sense secret key based authentication mechanism is being used okay so for that case you go to the advanced mechanism click on authentication so here you will have the options to choose the private key which we you know stored down here yeah? so we stored in a, in a previous step so that the same key i will leverage here go ahead and choose the previously saved ppk file and click ok all right so once you are selected ok click on the button login eventually it will start to connect to your you know our sftp server here you can just ignore this okay continue to connect your server so in the sense it will try to you know it will tell you that do i need to keep these configurations in a cache generally not recommended so don't keep on you know select no and eventually it says there is there's just some transaction is happening it is checking whether it is uh, we are entered the successful okay we have entered the correct credentials or not here you go right it has successfully authenticated and we have got a sftp connection to this server and henceforth you know you see the, the the right side okay the right side pane so you see the bucket right we see we have only one bucket in the root okay and this is what the bucket okay if i can open the bucket in the some other page let me duplicate this and i go to the you know s3 bucket now i will show you like you know how quickly we can upload a file into this s3 bucket all right so let me find my bucket because i have multiple buckets all right so um so i'm here now and i choose my bucket and uh, where is my bucket so if i go to the bucket so here is the bucket yeah so inside this bucket there is no objects okay there are no objects as of now okay and that is where that is where you see there are no objects right now and that's the reason it is very blank all right so this is the you know this is the first step you know we have successfully achieved like you know we have uh, from the internet okay so my laptop is nothing but internet from the internet i was you know i am leveraging the you know this win sap and have securely connected to this server okay this server through the internet yeah and now you are good to use this service in the sense if you want to uh, do a, uh, if you want to move some file into this particular s3 bucket you can do it uh, with using the manual method or this winsap can also used with using the automations as well yeah and also you know you can upload in a very huge size file okay for example if you directly upload the same file into the uh, from the pane and from the internet it will might take long time but you know if you upload from here it is just like a you know one minute yeah so here i will show you demo so here what i do is i just upload this 13 um, bit excel zip file to, to upload you know, just copy that file and put it across all right it will ask you do you want to put it something somewhere like this yes you will ask it i you know just yes and uh, you can just skip it all you know just uh, you know warning messages all right so here you go it's in no seconds okay within no time you know the file is got uploaded here if i refresh it we have uploaded one excel sheet right here you go the excel sheet has been uploaded successfully and this has happened through with using the winsap which is nothing but we have now we have leveraged the sftp protocol and uploaded our file with using aws transfer family service which from the back end it has a s3 bucket okay and to that bucket you know this file has been uploaded now if i go to the you know if i open the properties of this particular object now we see the workflow so workflow what is the workflow we set we set a workflow if some file is been you know uh, been been uploaded into the, into this s3 bucket there should be some tag been added to this object okay so let, let me show you the tag is been added here okay so if i go down to the tags where is the tags of this object all right the tags 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 so let me close this so we should see some tags okay that is what i wanted to show you here so if we go to the permissions tags bucket versions all right so s3 class tags so uh, let me refresh it something like this okay so that you know because uh, tagging will yes workflow will take some time probably that's the reason you know it is not been appearing here so let me go back to the uh, and, and refresh it yeah and we refresh it and we open it 
and we should see some tags okay that is what I mean if you go down and if you see here so there are certain tags have been uh, added you know probably the tags are not added why because the workflow might be failing yeah but eventually at the end okay so at the end uh, um, uh, the particular okay so if I go back to the workflow the workflow so here is the workflow so here you know um, here you know it is supposed to add uh, you know uh, add the tags okay so here it is not happening but you know eventually because of the permission issues but whereas you know that is how the that is actually how you know this uh, particular uh, workflow will work so finally let's refresh and see if it is not happening that's all but you know eventually it will add uh, you know whatever uh, the tags that you have suggested in the workflow definition so that will be added okay that is what you know this uh, tags will do so if i come down and see show you the you know thing so let me quickly finish up this and we were done with the this demo yeah all right so here as of now i uh, know no tags are been added so uh, user tags content here you go right so you see right it, it contains certain data right you see the you know, user defined something like this you know this is the user who has uploaded this file and uh, yeah and as of now you know the, the tag is not working what not working because of you know uh, because of the permission issues and all okay but eventually okay so eventually under the hood the original job okay the original job in the sense you know how do we leverage this you know sftp servers to upload a file into this s3 bucket okay this is how we do it all right so now finally let me show you very big file okay so how quickly you know we can upload a big file with using you know um, uh, with using this win sfp okay for that case what i do is i go to the desktop so let me go to the user lenovo user and desktop if I go to the Lenovo user and desktop, I have very big files in the desktop. So let me go to the desktops. And uh, where is a big file? So here is a uh, some big file. Okay, some something like this. You know, something 44 KB. I uh, know uh, for something big, very big. Yeah. So let me upload this file into this. Let me see. You know how much time it will say. Yeah. So generally, it will it will it will be very quick. Okay, that's what I was just wanted to show you. But when you upload from the directly from here, you know that's where you know prov the 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 time will be consumed very big. Okay, so here you know it's it's too big in the sense it is probably 400 uh, MB something like that. Okay, it will take eventually it will take that much you know time. Yeah, all right. So you know, this is how you know this is how we uh, leverage. Let me cancel this because eventually it will take some time. Okay, so let me close this. Okay, so probably you know it will get closed. All right, so whatever the things that we have shown you here, you know, this is how, you know, we can leverage the, you know, AWS transfer families, okay? All right, so with that note, okay, finally, uh, thank you very much for watching my videos. A kind request, please do subscribe my channel. That would really encourage me a lot. So with that note, thank you and thanks a lot. See you in the next video.